Welcome everyone to a gameplay of this bed we made. Oh, it's been a while since I like actually streamed. How do I do this again? I guess we start with new game. The game takes account of all your actions, including the ones you decide not to take. Alright, so choices matter. Proceed with caution. Oh god. I picked the wrong game. Service de police. Montreal. Seems very noir right now. Let's keep moving. So I can't really look around, I just stare ahead. We visiting? It's on your right. Here. Why can I not turn? I use my controller. I can. So each node has their assigned port. Yes, exactly. Hmm. Weird. Well, the usual there are I guess it's meant to be like that. Here we are. Alright. Are we being interrogated? Order, sir. Sophie Roy, I'm Detective Maurice Tremblay. Let's see. 21 year old, working at the crime time for over a year. Husband? I'm sorry? Are you married? No, not yet. I live with my mother. She's sick, so I have to take care of her. No father? No. It's always just been me and my mom. All right, Miss Roy. I need you to tell me everything that happened, starting with this morning. Flashback. Alright, now we got color. I'm digging the soundtrack so far. Dans un tourbillon, le vrai poème, car dans les frissons naissent tout. Les plus belles chansons d'amour. This bed we made. Clair de la fontaine, j'ai vu dans tes yeux mille couleurs. Quand la claire fontaine s'amusait au jeu de nos deux cœurs. done. Now just a bit of tidying up, and I can go on break. I liked it on. No need to bother reception right now. Holy Bible. Holy moly. Revised standard version. Alright. Nothing. What's this? Oh, ashtray. Well, I messed up the radio. I'm guessing you've seen better days, but you're obviously still important to someone. At least this teddy isn't as frightening as some of the other teddies in video games. Like Among the Sleep. Can I look at all of them? I can. What if there's something inside one of them? Hmm. I have a pillow. I have a pillow, I'm not afraid to use it. I will smack someone with it.
What we got in here? Clean. Hold. Okay. It's a cleaning simulator. Who would have thought? Is there nothing else? Ah. Oh. Good as new. I can't clean you yet, apparently. Okay. There's nothing in any of these. What the heck, man? Please clean this room. Do not disturb. There's a safe here, and we're not gonna inspect it? Alright. Valve there for something. I'm guessing this person already checked out. But maybe not, because the teddies are still there. It's a little bit weird. Le petit regal. Room service menu. Breakfast, all breakfast orders served with coffee and toast. Cereal, plain omelette, omelette with bacon, sausage ham. Eggs benedict, maple syrup pancakes. Do they have waffles? I would go for some waffles, honestly. They do not have waffles, you guys. That's bullcrap. They have chocolate cake, though. Chocolate cake is 60 cents? Oh my god. What I wouldn't give to have these prices back. Is there anything on the back? Yeah. Sparkling water. Ugh. Hmm. No, I just want the chocolate cake, honestly. That's a lot of money to owe. Just what did you get yourself involved in? Dear Mr. and Mrs. Mapleson, Regretful as we are to have to resort to these lines of communication, our client and your neighbor, the owner of 88 32nd Street, has been ultimately evasive of our many attempts to reach out and collect our due debts. Specifically, an amount owed to us to the sum of $1,904.75. He has given us little recourse, but to contact him through those in close physical proximity to him in the hopes that they can deliver a message on our behalf. We have little desire to disturb you and other fine citizens of 32nd Street, but our business may bring us back to your neighborhood if it is not resolved quickly. The help of your kind community will be greatly appreciated for us and certainly for your neighbor. Kindly, Lucky Coin Financing. Ooh. I'm trying to see if I can zoom in. Doesn't look like it though. Hmm. Only menswear. Are you in town for a business trip, maybe? You know me. You know my family. You've had a seat at our bar since the day we opened in 49. You're more than a friend to us. You're practically family. And while friends are polite to each other, family deserves more. Family deserves honesty. 
As such, I want to be as direct as possible in letting you know that you're down to your last chance. The $8,000, $380 US plus 25% interest is now eight months overdue. My patience is worn thin. This isn't like one of your unpaid bar tabs. You came to us for help, and help always comes at a price. We've opened up pockets to you time and time again, and all you've done is taken advantage of our goodwill and generosity. We'll come over, in person, to my good collection tomorrow. I'll be bringing along the boys so we can all sit down and have a little chat. But you just so you know, they aren't too good with words. They aren't too good with words. Ooh. But they're good with their fists, though. Acknowledgement of debt. Date of acknowledgement, January 16th, 1958. Date of initial loan, January 2nd, 1957. Entered into agreement between eligible Mayhew and eligible. Initial amount, 1500 Amount overdue, 3500 On the date of the initial loan, the lender agreed to lend an amount of money to the sum of 1500 to the borrower for an enduring period of 12 months calculated from date of the initial loan. The borrower was to be obliged to pay interest at the rate of 150% per annum. The total sum of said interest to be paid together with the capital sum of the granted loan by the loan period's end. With the loan period reaching its conclusion on July 2nd, 1957, the borrower was expected to repay the full amount owed. The failure to do so will prompt further action. Refer to BG page 3 for further details in place and time repayment. Refer to Section C for the expected rates of all overdue payments as they relate to the time that's passed since the end of the loan period. Hmm. <sighs> Nothing like a well-made bed. True. Place the pillow. Pretty sure. We're good now, right? We cleaned everything but the bathroom. I don't know. You brought your own mug? Best dad. Well, I guess ours aren't quite as complimentary. I mean, he brought a kid with him. He's got teddy bears there. Surely a grown man isn't gonna bring around teddy bears. I don't know what it wants me to do here. I guess I can't clean it? Alright. I suppose I'm done here. This is just spooky. Well, we heard something. Gossiper. Look at her. Always screaming with that gossip magazine. Do you think she has any real friends? Or is it just Gracie Joan and Marilyn? Well, oh my god. Snooty people. <laughs> Dean knew he had a date with death. Mm -hmm. 
Sophie speaking. Hey, um, do you think you could come up real quick? Um, sure. I'll be right there. You're right, you couldn't. What's with, like, the whispering? Did we leave our key? Is that the master key? Let's see what Beth wanted to talk about. Tempting, but every penny adds up, Sophie. True. Mm, now's not the time to pick up smoking, Sophie. Oh, Shaq. Leaving luggage in the lobby? Are you trying to get Bernard to kill you? <laughs> that is rather rude. This leak really needs to be fixed. I hope the weather doesn't make it worse. Why are there hearts all over the place? Is it like Valentine's Day? 19 arrests a deviant raid. Montreal police arrested 19 persons in an early Saturday raid at Manny's Lounge, located on Stanley Street, downtown Montreal. The establishment owned by Emmanuel La Liberté is a known hangout for sex deviants. A Montreal City employee, a court official, and two teachers were among those seized, according to official reports. Lieutenant Sylvain Gilbeau says he plans to send letters to schools employing the arrest of teachers. School principals, parents, and fellow teachers should prevent such people from being in close contact with youngsters, he said. It is everyone's responsibility to protect our children. Lieutenant Gil Gilbeau? That's such a weird name to say. I'm sure I'm not saying it right. Also promised an investigation would be open in La Liberté, who already has a criminal record to his name. Major snowstorm paralyzes city. Montreal is paralyzed by this winter's fifth and most important snowstorm. Most important. Why, why is it so important? 15 inches of snow are expected until the end of the day. The last major storm back in January had covered the city with 12 inches of snow. The storm started yesterday with six inches falling during the day and six more during the night. Violent winds created giant snowbanks all over the city. Many drivers ignored police warnings and decided to take their cars at their own risk, resulting in several accidents. Trains from the United States are expected to be delayed up to three hours. At Dorval Airport, most departures have been cancelled, while arrivals are delayed on diverted, diverted altogether. Shop owners against new mental hospital. A group of downtown Montreal businessmen and shop owners met with Mayor Sarto Fournier last week to air their grievances concerning the city's recent decision to allow constructions of a new mental hospital on Dorchester Boulevard. I'm curious to know if, like, this is all going to fit in with us. William Weston, manager of Wilson's department store, says he and his group will fight tooth and nail to prevent the hospital's construction. Will our customers feel safe to come downtown for their shopping needs knowing there are lunatics next door, he said. I mean, as long as those lunatics are sedated and in their rooms. <laughs> Another bloody Valentine. So it must be Valentine's Day, right? Valentine's Day concluded in horror last Friday with the murder of an Ultramont resident. Okay, so it was last Friday. Would they be taking down the hearts at this point? Good lord. A worried neighbor called the authorities at 11.15pm after hearing loud shouts from the next door. When police arrived, they found the lifeless body of a 34-year-old man. Authorities have refused to identify the victim or provide any details about the circumstances of his death. No suspect has been apprehended yet, but Detroit Lieutenant Maurice Tremblay asked anyone with information to come forward as soon as possible. Does your personal hygiene worry you? Are those worries bothering your husband? Stop worrying and save your marriage with lice oil. Not Lysol, lice oil. Lice oil is an indispensable aid to marriage hygiene. Millions of women use it regularly to safeguard their beauty and avoid undesirable surprises. It's penetrative and effective, even in the presence of organic matter. Begin to use the lies oil today so you can stop worrying about your hygiene and focus on more important things such as pleasing your hard-working husband. Oh, Jesus Christ. 
back in those days. Lice oil has been endorsed for more than 60 years by scientists, medical professionals, and many other men who have women's hygiene at heart, right? Lice oil corporation product. Just wow. should be stuck cleaning up the reception hall after a ball even if they did draw the short oh ball. they had a valentine's ball one drink and door prizes and best dressed contest and we missed it hey beth hey there so who's sleeping sleep what you were whispering just now on the phone, so I thought maybe Eugene or Bobby were napping in the break room again. Oh, yeah, no. It's Jacques and Wendy. They were, um, in the middle of something. Ugh, it's so awkward when they start making out like no one's watching. <laughs> Get a room. We literally work in a hotel. <laughs> we're gonna die like, oh, okay. Uh... That sounds like they're doing something else. <laughs> I try to ignore them. Uh, it seems we do this. Oh, I try not to pay attention to them. I just find the sucking noise is hard to ignore. Oh my god. But that won't be an issue today, of course. Every sound is being drowned out by the phone's constant ringing. Because of the storm? You have no idea. You're the only person I've talked to today that hasn't mentioned the blizzard. I mean, until now. Oh. I still haven't mentioned it. She yeah, did, not me. Right. I guess I'm just looking for something else to talk oh, about. Oh, maybe we didn't mention we Anything said storm. Else. I can tell you about Wendy and Jacques. Why? We shouldn't talk too much? Why? Why did both of these? Hey, Doctor! How are you? How you been? Let's, I don't know, I guess we can be a snitch. Well, I do have some gossip about Jacques and Wendy. <gasps> How dare you not lead with that? What's going on? Um, when you called, I wasn't whispering because they were making out. They were fighting. Oh, you had your birthday a couple days ago? Oh my I god. Mean, oh. You old toot. I'm not completely sure, but it sounded like Linda had something to do with it. Ugh, that bitch. Beth. Trust me, she deserves it. <laughs> You're like, stone age. You were there when the stone hinges were found. Uh, why does everyone hate Linda? I don't get why everyone hates her so much. Linda's always nice to me. To you, maybe, but she's just the worst to every girl she perceives as a threat. <laughs> Switch culture changes. A, <laughs> a threat to what? I don't know. Her place as Bernard's right hand, I suppose. So, you're saying I'm not a threat? I'm not saying that. I'm saying Linda thinks that. But that's her mistake. I know there's more to you than meets the eye. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. I so, think. Um, you said you needed me? My help, I mean. Oh, right. Wanna guess why? It's, it's a really awkward interaction here. Like, I can't help but think there's, there's something she seems really shy. Uh, something to clean? I'm guessing there's something I have to clean? Obviously. But what is it? Uh, did a kid throw up again? God, no. Did that happen recently? <laughs> yeah, last week. I can still smell it. Feel it, too. While I was cleaning, some of it got... Uh, I'm gonna stop you right there. 
Keep talking and you'll be cleaning up after me too. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, you'll be glad to know it's nothing gross this time. A nice gentleman decided it was time to redesign the lobby and helped us by knocking over that vase on his way out of the hotel. That's it? I would do it myself, but the last time I tried to leave the front desk, Bernard emerged from his lair to scold me about procedures and whatnot. Well, we can't have the beauty of the Clarington Hotel take absence from her throne, can we? Oh, the people would riot. Bernard especially. <laughs> Bernard's hardly the people. <laughs> anyway, I have to get back to work. There's a mop in the supply <laughs> It's like so much gossip in a game. Thanks. I'll see you around. Man, we're gonna bend over to pick this vase up. She's gonna look at my butt. I just know it. I mean, I know we're consenting adults, but... It's my butt, not hers. Can I move this stupid... <laughs> There's a symbol on the Streamlabs chat. And it like blocks a portion of the text. I'm like, oh, why are you there? I don't want you there. To interact with chat, you can open this chat in a web browser. I don't want to interact with chat. I want that stupid thing off. <laughs> oh my god. Get it away. This wasn't here before. Nocturne. <laughs> the one time I come back to stream, and YouTube does this to me. I can't win, I'm telling you. It's just the worst. I just want to play this bed I made. I didn't even make a bed yet. Well, yeah, I did. I made one bed. That's one bed more than I usually make. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Alright, well, I'll just have to deal with it. <laughs> Alright. Tired of standing here doing nothing. Can I ring this? Excuse me, ma'am. Can you help me? She doesn't even care. Desk? Guess he didn't hear Beth when she swore she'd burn the place to the ground next time she had to suffer through one of his sermons. I think of one for already unrealistic. Maybe she'll. What this one? Nothing? Nothing, Beth? <sighs> wow. Okay.
Sure thing. Just ignore me. I'm on to you. Linda, Wendy's great at her job. Guests absolutely love her and... Huh, not just guests, apparently. Oh, God damn it, Linda! I only like her because guests like her. Making sure guests are happy is my job, after all. You don't seem to care whether I'm happy. <sighs> Listen, if Wendy wasn't doing her job, that'd be another story, but I can't just fire her without good reason. What if she stirred up trouble among the staff? Would that be a good reason? Curiosity killed the cat. Oh, Andrew, hi. I, I was, I mean, I'm sorry, I was just spying on our manager i already know i'm gonna get confused on everybody's name i'm already like who's wendy it's okay i'm just pulling your leg i'm i'm sorry i scared you i'm just i i'm not used to having people around me while i work yeah you're always working alone up there aren't you i actually think it's the first time i've seen you down in the lobby don't tell me you've been sent to clean up after the valentine's day ball who's <laughs> wendy uh, I heard it was a disaster. I heard the girls talking downstairs. Apparently, guests went wild. More like unhinged. Mrs. Wilson almost broke a chandelier, and we kept finding chewed up olives in the weirdest of places. Ew. I hope the rooms won't reflect that. I hope that too, for your sake. You must see plenty of weird stuff while you're cleaning. Yeah. What's I think that's one thing. <laughs> That would make a job like hers interesting. Just going into someone's room after they've left, you don't even know what the hell you're walking into. <laughs> it's like slowly opening the bathroom door stall because you don't know there's just gonna be a poo mess everywhere or not. <laughs> Maybe that's just me though. What's the weirdest thing you found in a guest room? Uh, terrifying. Like, actually terrifying. <laughs> so that's, uh, something about you. Well, there was this lady who had a love letter addressed to someone I know. What? No way. Uh, who was it? Green Aunt Bertha. You're messing with me. <laughs> it was worth seeing your face turn red. Wow, <laughs> you got me. Oh, I uh, I better go help Beth. It's hell here with the snowstorm. It's okay. I need to. Um. Yeah. yeah all right. Take care. I need to Thank eavesdrop you. some more. <laughs> Oh. Okay, let's get that mop from the supply closet. Oh, I forgot about this crap. <laughs> I need to pay more attention. Oh, hey, here's everyone. <laughs> Maybe I won't be so stupid after all. Some days I'm convinced that Clarington's haunt is not that I believe in ghosts normally, but there have been too many incidents for me to rule <laughs> there is a Wendy of the possibility completely. Just this morning I was waiting for the elevator on the fifth floor when I heard a loud bang behind me, like someone shutting a door up, but with more force than I've ever heard a person use. I looked around, but there's no one to be seen. Am I just imagining? I mean, if they shut the door, then they're probably behind a door. Trouble in paradise. I've heard Wendy. Oh, okay. Wendy and Jock. That's who Wendy is. And Beth is the one overseeing the desk. Linda is the one talking to Bernard. From the sounds of it, Linda got to Jacques' head and convinced him that Wendy was flirting with some of our guests. Okay, so Wendy and Jacques are together. And Linda is driving a wedge between them. Cool. Nobody likes Linda. 
instead of Karen, it's Alinda. Anyone who's been around them for more than a minute could see how much Wendy loves shock. She would never do that to him. Even if it's only a few minutes out of my day, my chats with Beth are always a highlight. She called me up to clean a mess made by one of our guests, which gave us a chance to catch up. I don't think I met someone who can make conversations seem so effortless. Beth has a witty response to everything. She has a crush on Beth. It kind of seems like it. It's too bad mates aren't usually allowed in the lobby. Chatting with whoever do would be a great way to start my morning. Uh, it definitely sounds like it. Oops, so Andrew caught me eavesdropping on Bernard and Linda, who was once again complaining about Wendy. Thankfully, he didn't make a big deal out of it. He doesn't seem the kind of judge. He's actually quite nice. I bet he's the murderer. Whatever happened here, he's the murderer. It's always, it's always the guy that's trying to be nice. Easy to talk to, fun to tease, and funny in his own quiet way. I hope I'll get a chance to talk to him more. I get the sense that there's a lot more to him than he willingly shows. Okay, Beth. Beth has been the hotel's receptionist for as long as I can remember. In fact, hers was the first face that welcomed me when I took my first step inside the Clarington. She knows this place like the back of her hand. The Clarington sounds very, very fancy. Just the name of it. Beth can be fiery, which doesn't win her much love from Bernard, but most guests adore her for a magnetic personality and that's something Bernard can plainly see. We don't get the chance to chat as often as I'd like, but when we do, it's always a blast. I only wish I had even half of her wit so I could entertain her as much as she entertains me. Bernard is the Clarington's manager, the big boss. He spends most of his days locked in his office and doesn't like the maids roaming around outside their posts, so our paths don't cross often. Lately, he's been hellbent on getting the hotel back in shape, whatever that means. There have been a lot of changes around here as a result. He's enforcing employee rules more strictly than ever and dropping god knows how much money on renovations. I mean, the place looks pretty nice, from what I've seen of it. I haven't seen any of the areas where they're like actually renovating. The stress is practically radiating off of him. Bernard and Linda are quite close. She's the second in command, but it's an open secret that there's more going on. They've been arguing more and more lately, though, usually about Linda's strong feelings about Wendy. Bernard loves Wendy, or more accurately, loves how much the guests love her, while Linda thinks she's up to no good. Linda can fuck off. Ew, look at her. No one likes you, Linda. <laughs> I hope you die first. Linda is the Clarington's governess, Bernard's second in command. And it's easy to see why. She rules over the maids with an iron fist, always ready to enforce Bernard's latest rules to the letter. With some hate her for this, but my feelings are a bit more mixed. For whatever reason, she seems to have a soft spot for me. The same cannot be said for Wendy, unfortunately. It's like she's made it her life's mission to break up Wendy and Jacques' relationship, and I'm worried that her latest efforts may have succeeded. I wonder if back in these days if it was fine if co-workers dated. Because I know nowadays it's like... It's kind of taboo. Like, you had to be on different shifts or something. Linda's always worked quite closely with Bernard, but we've all known their relationship goes beyond just co-workers. Their relationship has been strained lately, and it seems like the source of that strain is poor Wendy. Bernard be might be willing to bend over backwards for Linda, but firing the hotel's most popular waitress just because she demands it? I'm not sure he'll bend that far. Wendy is a waitress at the hotel's restaurant. She and her best friend, Yvette, were hired together, and they used to be inseparable until three or four months ago. It's no coincidence that this was around the time Wendy started dating Jacques, the bellboy, to whom she's now happily engaged. That is, depending on who you ask. Linda seems to think that Wendy is the Clarington's resident flirt. Sure, she's popular with the guests and collects the most tips by far, but I've always chalked that up to the same thing that's drawn me to her. That warm smile that just radiates kindness. Wasn't she talking shit about me behind my back while I was reading the magazine. Why, why are we being nice here? Question mark? Linda's not convinced though and seems to have taken it upon herself to expose Wendy for who she really is. Right. Jealous much? Jacques is one of the Clarington's bellboys. I don't know much about him. He's even more shy than I am, barely looking up at guests when carrying their luggage. People like us just need someone to bring us out of our shells, and apparently for Jacques, that person is Wendy. 
He's like a completely per different person around here. He lights up, laughs, even cracks jokes. I was so happy that he found Wendy and even happier when he proposed. They're like the Clarington's very own Janet and Tony. But it seems our engagement is in peril thanks to Linda's meddling. Stand strong, Jacques. Don't fall for her manipulations. Andrew is a concierge and receptionist for the Clarington. He's intelligent, professional, kind, and well-mannered, which easily makes him Bernard's favorite, but he knows how to have fun when no one's looking. Whenever I see him, he's either dashing off on his latest errand or burying himself in a book, so we haven't had a lot of chances to socialize at length. When we do, though, it always feels... easy. Like talking to someone perfectly attuned to your wavelength. Maybe I should ask him for some book recommendations. It would be nice to have more reasons to talk to him. Oh, there's no image for mom. Why don't we have an image for mom? <laughs> mom always means well, but life hasn't dealt her the best hand of cards. She doesn't talk to me very much about her time as a nurse during the war. But I've always wondered what kind of person she was before the harrowing chapter of her life. It's just the two of us at home. Mom's had bad luck with keeping jobs. She finds it hard to be around people, so she stays at home most of the time. At least she's never missed an episode of The Wild Orchard. On her good days, she can manage on her own, but on her bad days, well, I do my best to be there for her. Left when I was two years old. Haven't heard from him since. Mom doesn't say much, so I stopped asking. Did I hear someone moan in there? Bobby made it very clear he doesn't like anyone walking into his kitchen uninvited. Bobby. Bobby McGee! Bobby is the head chef in Clarington's kitchen. He takes care of all the restaurant orders and the meals ordered the room service. I love walking by the kitchen doors any chance I get, just to enjoy the smells of whatever Bobby's cooking up. But linger too long and you'll get an earful, or worse. I only want to spend another afternoon cleaning macaroni out of my hair. What the hell? Macaroni. Why would you have macaroni in your hair? He throw it at you? Okay, Sophie. Time to clean up that mess. I thought about it. I thought about going in there. Should I go in there? Why is he grunting? He's grunting. Oh, we're going in there. Now's probably not a good time to disturb Bernard. Oh, I'd like to disturb him. Can you see anything in there? What's he doing? What are they doing? He's in there with a woman, damn it. I'm really sorry about that. I'll have a word with our kitchen staff to make sure it doesn't happen again. Maybe what what's your name? Maybe Andrew will answer me. Don't you think? Andrew. Of course. We're all grateful that your employer chose Look, he side-eyed me. He was listening. <laughs> all right. Yes. I'll speak to my manager and see. Was there anything else I could do? Yes. Linda's been putting these everywhere lately. It's weird that Bernard allows it. Protect the family. Say no to divorce. You can be divorced against your will. Women and children suffer most in divorce. Why do women suffer the most in divorce? <laughs> Is it because they have to keep the kids? You lose your succession rights in divorce. The wife's pension rights are lost in divorce. You lose your right to the family home in divorce. So the husband keeps like literally everything. I already read that. Can I play the piano? Look at that snow. A lot of snow. Someone's been playing chess. Someone left their hat. 
After possibly breaking the vase. Ew. I better throw that away. <laughs> Why'd I pick it up? A film roll. Oh, we're keeping this. Dropped it when he knocked over the vase. Probably should return it to him. Oh my God, the satisfaction! The satisfaction is real. Now I just put the leaves back in the vase, and it'll be like nothing ever happened. Nice. Ta da! Maybe Beth remembers who knocked over the vase. He'll want his film roll back. She said Beth, but then she said he. While cleaning up the mess in the lobby, I found a roll of film on the ground. I'm guessing whoever knocked over the vase must have dropped it. With Beth's help, Meg can figure out who it belongs to and return it to the room. We usually keep lost items at the front desk, but bringing it back myself would only take a few minutes out of my day. It might put me a few steps closer to employee of the month. Oh god. Don't be that person. I understand, Mr. Ramsey. I wish I could make the snowstorm disappear. I really do, but sadly that's not within my power. Beth? Who knocked over that vase? Mr. Spade. Mr. Spade. Well, I can check with the airport and let you know when flights resume. Until then... Yes, yes, I know. You've said that already. But... No, that's very unlikely. So, which room are you staying in, Mr. Spade? I'm sure There's too many flippin' names! Nocturne, where's Spade on here? Talk to my manager's manager. Would you like to contact him? Mm, sadly, he doesn't have a phone. He's a bit of an old fashioned fellow, if you know what I mean. Spade. 505. Yes, certainly. So, first, I suggest finding a nice little corner where you can kneel down, all right? Then what? You clasp your hands together. What is she talking about? Hard about just how much you want the snowstorm to end. It may help to repeat his name, too. It's, um, God? G-O-D. <laughs> She's telling him to pray to God for the snow to stop. Wow. I like her. Also, why is... What happened here? Five oh five. Where am I going? I need to get back to the logbook and find. I found it. Room it's room five oh five, woman. Spade S. Enter selection mode. Uh, I'm sorry? Oh, there we go. That was weird. Spade. Room 505. Great. That's on my floor. I can return that film roll without going out of my way. Yay! Off to room 505. I felt bad bugging Beth while she was in the middle of an important phone call, but like always, she came through. The logbook says Mr. Speed's in room 505. I was just in the middle of taking care of the fifth floor before I break. I return the film roll and get right back to my schedule. Something's gonna happen. Oh, 
Mr. Spade is a guest here at the hotel. He's staying in room 505. He seems to carry film rolls around. He was in such a rush to get somewhere in today that he knocked over the vase in the lobby. But other than that, I don't know much about him. I can't deny that I'm curious to know more. Why? Why are you curious to know more? All he did was knock a vase over and drop a film roll. Woo. -hoo. It's so fascinating. Made it. Thanks. You're welcome. Was it you who cleaned the puddle by the restrooms? Was I not supposed to? Well, Eugene asked us not to touch anything in the until puddle patrol. Week, but it's probably safer this way. Someone could have slipped on it. Which floor? Oh, uh, sixth. Thanks. What's the big rush? I need to bring this to our VIP guest. The one who rented the entire floor? Oh, is it that British man I keep hearing about? What is that thing he's holding? Remind me of like a cremation vase. Why is he need to oh, it's snow? It's not <laughs> cremated remains. Why does he need a bucket full of snow? No idea. I don't even ask anymore. It's just the latest in a long series of strange requests. What do you reckon he'll do with it? Take a bath, maybe? <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if he's just pulling an elaborate prank on me. Could be like, put Can bottles of wine in there, keep them cold. I've never actually met him. I always talk to his assistant. Only Bernard knows his identity. Oh. Um. I do have a suspicion, though. Oh? But I'm, I'm not sure I should say it. Can't you at least give me a hint? Mm. Okay, let me think. Whew. Oh, Save no hint. Bell. Goodbye. Hey, come on. Don't leave me hanging. Let's just say I like to prolong the suspense. Wait, is that the hint? Hmm. Who knows? <laughs> Fair enough. Have fun up there. You too. I will fire right in front of us. Eugene. Eugene is in charge of the hotel's maintenance. Pretty much everyone likes him. He's friendly, hardworking, and does his job well. Anytime I've needed help, he's been happy to lend a hand. Since the renovation started, though, his usually good mood has lost some of his spark. I can see that Bernard's lofty expectations are weighing on him. I just hope he doesn't burn out. He doesn't deserve that. Andrew's mystery guest. I bumped into Andrew again in the elevator. From the sounds of it, the VIP guest in the sixth floor has been busy with all kinds of strange requests. I tried to press him for more information, but all he gave me was a cryptic hint. I like to prolong the suspense. I'm dying to know who it is. Andrew clearly knows how to keep a secret. Prolong the suspense? Is he a writer? A mystery writer? Does carrying this everywhere really make us better maids? Bernard seems to think so. Be invisible. Be thorough. Be careful. Partial cleaning. Complete cleaning. I should return Mr. Spade's film roll. Room 505 is on my list anyway. It's cracked open. That's not a good sign. You know it's not a good sign. Mr. Spade? It's even worse when they don't answer. He's dead. Mr. Spade? He says camera in there. A developing room. Mm. 
Pretty sure you're supposed to keep that door shut, though. so fucked. <laughs> is it something to do with the... What is this? Perfume bottle? Is that a perfume bottle? It's a perfume bottle. I don't really want to mess with anything. I especially don't want to touch this thing. I don't know. For some reason, I think it would be a bad idea to touch that one. <laughs> Maybe not, though. Alright. Let's go ahead and clean. I should bring that back to my Clean it to do a good job. Oh, I hear stuff in there. Maybe I should call Beth or Andrew. They'll they'll know what to do. I hope. Why can't I see my reflection? Looks like prescription drugs. But what are they for exactly? Cleaning simulator. I know, right? It's like satisfying. Let's see. Okay, so we found teddy bears that were a bit burnt. Lucky coin financing letter. Menacing letter to neighbors to someone who borrowed a lot of money. Handwritten letter with an aggressive tone. A letter detailing a loan that's been paid off in time. A lovely mug with hand drawn flowers and the words best dad. Looks like something a child would make. That was room 504. Room 505. Pictures of me snooping through a guest suitcase. When did I snoop through a... Hmm. I guess it was before I actually played the game. Various tools and products used to develop pictures. A prescription drug bottle, half full. Nocturne. Look up. Reprobamate. See what it is. I bet it's antipsychotic. Why would she use the phone in his room? Treating anxiety disorders? Antipsychotic? What'd I tell you? What can I do for you on this very fine day? Uh, Beth or Andrew? Why would we want Andrew's help? Beth is our go to gal. Beth, I need your help. Sophie? 
What's going on? I, I think Mr. Spade's stalking me while I work. Really? I knew it! You did? Well, once again, I mean, you're I in his room on his phone. Him. He just has creep written all over his face, you know? How did you find out? He took pictures of me. I... I found them hanging over the bathtub. He set up a kind of dark room. Pictures of you? Doing what? You don't gotta answer that. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but sometimes when I clean the rooms, I get a little curious and, um, you know, snoop through our guest stuff. Sneaky. And Mr. Spade caught you in the act, I suppose? Yes. I think... I think we should call the police. No, that's a terrible idea. But... Sophie, that man has pictures of you running your hands through people's stuff. But I didn't steal anything. I was just snooping, I swear. I know, I know, but... Say a client reports something missing. Those pictures would put a big red target on your back. Hmm. I get through the pictures out. I well, just pissed him off. And he's probably got more pictures. There's no way he doesn't have more pictures of us. So I just leave? Do nothing? Do nothing? No. But it'd be smarter to wait until you have the whole story. Or at least more than you have now. Before making a move. I've been in dark rooms before. Setting one up in a space that isn't made for that takes time and effort. Wait, you're a photographer? <laughs> no. I was there to look at pictures a photographer took of me. Look, all I mean to say is there's no way he set all of this up just for a couple of pictures. There has to be more. Is he a detective? See, I think another thing with the job she has with cleaning rooms and hotel is you would want to snoop. It's just curiosity. You see something, you want to look through it. <laughs> 